Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here. Before we get into the podcast, I just want to do a quick shout out for BMT tax depreciation reports. Now, for my two rental properties, I've had a BMT tax depreciation report done on those. And at tax time, I can get up to $25,000 worth of tax deductions. And that's a lot of money. And for your property owners, would you believe a lot of them don't know the savings that they can be getting? And every rental property can still have some type of tax depreciation. So get in contact with the guys at BMT, talk to them about how you as a property manager and a property management agency can be serving your clients in Australia about getting the maximum tax deductions for their rental properties. Take care. Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here and I'm with Dennis Youssef and we are Inspired Growth Training and we have an absolute treat today a very special guest and a person that's close to us in our igt inner circle and welcome ashley goodchild to the pm growth expert show thank you for joining us today thank you for having me cool and um just to, just so you know if you're watching the video podcast of course we've got the full audio series on spotify podbean or on itunes podcast as well to go over there and also if you are not listening to your bdm coach it's about time that you started to listen um and go to our bdm coach podcast show as well on spotify um, iTunes or on Podbean as well and subscribe to that show as well where you get the, the best BDM teaching with Dennis and with Michael as well. Now Ashley is the uh, one of the directors at uh, Soco Realty based in South Perth um, in Western Australia um, and Ashley uh, we talked about this before but you say you've got 21 years uh, of property management experience Now I was saying you don't look like you've even been out of school for 21 years um, and, and you told me that you still get asked for your ID to confirm that you're over 18 so you're doing pretty well. I'm jealous. <laughs> Thanks Darren. <laughs> Only every now and then but um, yeah when, when I can go out that is as well. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, look Ashley like everyone else we were friends on Facebook for how many years before we actually got to meet in person you know it, it's a beautiful thing Facebook and I remember um, Darren, it was our second tour that we did together in 2018 with Steve and um, Ash had bought a ticket and um, I messaged or I emailed, I can't remember, and said, hey, you know, thanks for coming. It'd be great to, to catch up with you. And Ash's reply was, yep, I've been using other trainers. I thought I would come and see what you guys have got to offer and, and give it a go. And I went, okay, challenge accepted, you know. <laughs> I, I, we've known Ashley for years though. I mean, I remember Ashley doing some training in your office many, many years ago. So it's not like we're an unknown. Yeah, but no. Darren, you're a superstar. I'm not known. <laughs> <laughs> so that's cool. I was giving Dennis a go, not Darren. <laughs> yeah, anyway, and um, I mean, look, seeing, seeing so much what you've been doing, and I, look, I, I really look forward to doing this um, podcast with you today. Because um, what you've done just in that short period of time since we did first meet to now is great. Uh, it's phenomenal to see you've really stamped your authority in the Perth marketplace as an authority. You know, I, I was talking to um, a good friend of mine um, and Darren's, and, and you know her as well, Shoshana, only mm. a couple of days ago. And, I mean, she absolutely stamped her authority um, there as well and I said Shoshana step up because we're doing a podcast with Ashley <laughs> I think if I, if I just like to say Ashley uh, yeah your goal is to stamp your authority in the um, you know the inner, inner city Perth market in your South Perth area you've done that very very well but inadvertently you've become an influencer in the property management industry over Australia and New Zealand as well because social media is not just confined within the boundaries of the South Perth suburb. Um, it's, it leaks out everywhere. And no doubt you've even got a following in America as well. So um, you've certainly caught my attention. I've known you for a very, very long time, but particularly in the last year, I think uh, we've talked about certain life events seem to have triggered something off in you, but you've, um, you've really come out. You, you just like this, uh, you know, this influence in the industry. You really, um, sprouted some amazing butterfly wings and we're seeing uh, a lady that um, 
you know, it's got so much potential now um, taking advantage of that and moving into who you really are. It's really good to see. And I think what for me was, um, is a really main focus is that I was getting really tired of seeing sales reps, like, and glamorize is not the right word, but sales reps, you know, they glamorize themselves. They always have the, the shiny car, the shiny shoes, the shiny Facebook pages. Um, you know, they always do, they, they are so good at their personal branding because they have to be good at their personal branding because they rely on their payday for that, their commission. But property managers don't do that. So for me, it's a really um, an interesting space that I want to create, um, you know, more, just more publicity about is the importance of property managers to personally brand themselves, take responsibility for their own careers and see ourselves as, um, as an, an important part of the business and just not the second cousin. And I remember speaking to a new client the other day and we're talking about this and she said oh ash it's really really funny because she was my other property manager has just been upgraded to a sales rep she goes what's that about she goes that's not an upgrade she goes property management you know why are we not seen as um as, as a glamorous position the same as, the same with any role whether it's a bdm role property management leasing consultant but yeah owning that role and um having that profile accordingly, I think it's really important for everybody. So I think if, if out there, go and have a look and see what Ashley is doing. Go to Instagram and go to Perth Property Manager um, and you'll find Ashley there. Um, also on LinkedIn, her stuff's really good. Just look for Ashley Goodchild on LinkedIn. Where else, Ashley, are your, uh, have you been spreading your influencer wings? What, what other platforms uh, can people go to? Well, de well, definitely, um, definitely LinkedIn is like the big thing for me. So I probably spend maybe 70% of my time um, focusing on that because that's where my current clients and my potential clients are. Um, my Perth property manager, my Instagram is very much for the industry and for um, motivation with property managers. Um, but I leverage off everything. So for example, if I create a video, I put that on LinkedIn that goes on YouTube, I convert that video um, into text, it's then a blog, um, then all of that, whether it's the blog or the video, that then goes to my database as my weekly newsletter. So I manage my um, social media that way. But I, I think you've got to be over all platforms, but um, the majority is LinkedIn at the moment. Yeah, you certainly do have to be omnipresent. And um, I, I wanna take it a step back because you, you, you spoke about, um, the sales reps looking all shiny, et cetera. And, and it's not being derogative to them. It's a good point. They have to market themselves. Now you're, you're in a BDM position. You have to market yourself, right? You've got to put yourself out there. And let's be honest, the BDM is the salesperson of property management. Your job is to, you know, um, have your online presence out there. So well done for recognizing that and making it a priority. And I've got no doubt that the, um, you're going to have some American and UK followers starting to follow you as well. Um, I, I have noticed, because I've got quite a few American friends, that um, you are already friends with some of them. So it's, okay. yeah, you know, that, that, it, that it's happening and no doubt it'll happen even more. You know, you're doing a great job. That, that first training that you came to us, Darren spoke on maximizing fees as he does, because he's like the genius of it. I spoke about video um, and strategies to grow the rent roll and Steve spoke about, you know, his topic there as well, mindset and stuff. And I remember uh, we're waiting for you to get picked up outside the Novotel at Perth and you said, Dennis, <clears throat> I don't think putting your fees up can work. Um, you know, blah, blah, blah. And Darren, you know the, the big butt that gets in the way and this video thing, you know what, I might give it a go. But, um, you know, I'm happy plodding along how I go. <laughs> yeah. Dennis said, challenge accepted, look forward to catching up again, you know. <laughs> but you also remember, Ashley was in a different place in her life then too. Yeah. And she's come a long way since that time. Um, and we're without, you know, talking about stuff. But uh, Ashley, it's just great to see you've really come out of your shell and you're not the lady that I used to know. So, <laughs> no, no, definitely a lot has changed. Yeah, in That's a good way. Brilliant. Yeah. So why did you join real estate? What, what, what got you into real estate? Well, I was actually studying naturopathy and I had done that for a few years. And as any sort of, you know, 17, 18 year old, um, you know, goes, you, you chase the money. So for me, I was 
I had about 100 hours of prac massages that I had to do. And then I thought, I'll go get a little job at a local real estate agency. And this local real estate agency in Fremantle had, um, the owner had just passed away. And it was bought by a pilot and a um, flight attendant. And so I thought, I'll just go in there and I'll get a little reception job while I'm finishing off these prac hours. But then these owners didn't really have any idea what they were doing. So within literally weeks, they were like, Ash, can you start doing this? Can you start doing that? Can you do some property management, some strata? Within about three months, I was paying everybody and doing, you know, everything that needed to be done. Yeah. Um, and then I was then getting paid accordingly. And then those massages looked um, not as exciting anymore and, and that's pretty much how it was but I was given a lot of control and also put into the deep end as an 18 year old into a poorly run real estate agency they had no idea I had no idea but at least I had the energy to work out how to do it and that's how I started. That's it's the typical way really for a lot of people that joined the industry there's a minute percentage that were at school put their hand up and said I want to be a real estate agent uh, yeah a lot of people fall into the industry I fell into the industry as well and I, um, I know plenty of people that um, most people listening probably fell into the industry yeah uh, you know um, a lot of people also started at reception you know um, you know as a job out of school and now they own a real estate office you know, yeah. that's crazy. So tell us a little bit about your office, your structure, you know, your team, your environment, etc. So we are um, very much a family owned community sort of based real estate agency. We have um, 550 properties under management. So we're considered medium um, sized in Perth. We are close to the city. Um, we are in a very more affluent area. So, but we do have a lot of low end. We're very um, diverse. So I've got properties for 200 per week and then properties for 1100 per week. Wow. Um, so it's, it is a big difference. Um, we are very hyper local. So for me, it's very important to support the local businesses. They support us in return. Um, you know, when, when I take the kids up to school, my clients are up there. When I go to Coles to go to my food shop, my clients are there. Um, but I really do like immersing myself in that um, community spirit. Um, our office, we have a lot of long-term staff. We've got three that were due for long service leave this year. Um, so, which is, which is great. They're very loyal to me. I am very, very lucky to have such a great team. Um, but then I also show flexibility, um, on their part where they, um, they, if they have a sports carnival or an assembly where their child's getting a merit certificate, they know that it's okay to take that time off to go make sure that they do those important things as well. And I think that's for me, probably the key to keeping longer term staff. Our property management is definitely the strongest part of our department. We do have a sales team as well, which is um, very reputable, but just um, small. And they just work their clients as opposed um, to, to having a really big marketing section. So mm, That's brilliant. Look, it sounds like you've got an amazing culture. Um, massive point of difference. Not too many people, and Darren, um, you know, you've been in the industry for 40, 50 years longer than me, <clears throat> so you would know, how many people can say that they've got three staff on long service leave this year? Oh, Not look, many I, people. There's, I can only probably think of one other business, maybe in Adelaide, mm. that boasts a near zero yep. staff turnover. Mm. Um, you know, that, that's amazing. That says a lot about your culture. Um, yeah, well done. You know, um, for owners out there, property owners out there that just see four property managers in a year um, turning over all the time, that's a, a great point of difference to any owners out there have been stung. Yeah, we all know about that wheel, right? That, that door. <laughs> that, that, and, and it's also like with my staff, it's quite funny that I probably, um, they're just as passionate about the business as what I am. So they're really advocates. Like one of the girls was at the pharmacy and she was in line waiting for whatever. And she got talking to a guy in the line who happened to be a developer. So she pulls out a card and gives him a card. Then I've got, um, you know, I've sometimes when I'm a, I'm a very relaxed business owner. So sometimes I would say to my staff, oh, listen, if you've got to go out, just put a note on the door. And they're like, no, that is not what we're going to do. You know, I will make sure when someone's here to cover. So 
I'm a bit more relaxed and saying, guys, don't worry about it. And they're very much, um, no, this is the way that's going to be done. So I'm very lucky that they are as passionate um, and as supportive of the business doing well. And it's not just on my shoulders. It certainly starts at the top, right? Mm -hmm. it, it does start at the top. They've, they've caught your vision. They've caught your, um, your passion for the industry. And just listening to you, right? <clears throat> People no doubt listening to this right now are already going to be falling in love with you and catching your passion. It certainly does come out. Now on that, right? If you were to meet yourself knowing what you know now about the industry, you, you know, you, I often talk about, you know, you're about to walk into that office for the first time, someone taps you on your shoulder, you turn around and it's you, right? You know, what advice do you give yourself? What, you know, what, what, what are you going to tell yourself before you walk in the door? Well, I've had a very, very good career. Like, I've been very fortunate. I think, number one, it's always really important to understand that mis mistakes happen and definitely not to um, beat yourself up about it. So that's um, really important to me. I think joining a network group, if I would have liked to have more support earlier on in the game, um, that would have been pretty important, I think. Um, but the other thing that I, and I kick myself that I didn't do this, I really do wish I did, um, is probably taking more, um, taking more statistics. Like, I'm not really a statistics person, and I wish that I had developed that database from day one and documented my conversion rate from day one and just really documented so I could see the growth. Um, that's something that I... I, I still am not 100% at doing, um, but I wish that I did that from day one. Yeah, that's, that's a really interesting point. Now, if you were to start a business from scratch, from zero, like if you were to go out and, and start all over again, what do you think would be the, your top three strategies that you would put in place in, um, in focusing on those growth? Oh, it's all going to be social media, to be honest. Um, it will be like, so what I've been doing in the last, say, 18 months really strong, I like imagine if I was doing that 10 years ago or 20 years ago, like it's just crazy to even think um, of um, being ahead of the game so early on in the piece and, and, trusting what people say and you know what I mean and just going you know what I'm just going to give it a go first I'm talking about social media but giving it a go now and just see what happens so the three strategies that I would put in place will definitely be um, the LinkedIn um, maintaining my database on that um, it's, it's really what I'm doing now LinkedIn um, more communication with the database and then I would make sure that I've got exterior um, marketing happening as well within the community. So that could be in the forms of um, sponsorships, letterbox drops, um, flyers, etc. I, I, I really work on a three layer um, marketing plan, a little bit for the community, a little bit for your internal community, which is your database and then your social. So it's, it's pretty simple, those three things is all I'd be doing, which is what I'm doing now. And the synergy for the three, they really do need to be working together. And, I mean, we're talking about it before the podcast. Can, can, you, can, I, I just want to, I'd like to jump in. Let's just talk, if I can just ask and just go a little bit deeper, Ashley. Um, a lot of people look at LinkedIn with a big question mark over their head. They're just like, I've got no idea how to use LinkedIn for business. Uh, it's just a big electronic Rolodex or, you know, a collection of business cards um, and stuff on there that people are likely not even looking at. Um, I put stuff on there and I only get one like or two likes. So what are the top three things have you found using LinkedIn? Now, you said that you leave your Instagram for your influencer stuff for the industry, but LinkedIn is for you and getting new business with prospective clients. So what are the top three things that people should be doing now with LinkedIn, with their business, that they can start getting some growth traction using that particular platform? Love this question. Number one, on LinkedIn, when you open up the app on your phone, there's a section that says my network. And if you click on that, 
you can find all your Outlook and your phone contacts. And you just have to click on Outlook contacts and phone contacts. And you just go through and you just connect with all those people. So that is number one. Those people have already connected with you in some way or form because they're on your phone. So connect with every single one of those people. So that's definitely the first tip. Um, I always have a, um, a shortcut keyboard message for my connections where I would send them a little message just to say, thanks for connecting. Um, I am busy educating landlords in Perth. I hope you enjoy my content and I look forward to learning something from you too. Something like simple like that. Um, that's the first tip. The second tip with LinkedIn is I will um, find people within my community. So again, it's so simple. Like you just search South Perth or you just search um, local schools, local businesses, local councils and connect with all those people. So that's my second tip to develop a new, um, a new database there. And then the third tip is that whenever I am in, I get in touch um, or someone gets in touch with me for new business, like within about five minutes, they are added to my LinkedIn. Um, and that is a really great way of getting that cold lead to immediately start being a warm lead. They can see me every single day. They can see what I'm about. They can see my energy. And then generally when I go out and I see them in person, um, my conversion rate is a lot higher because they feel like they know me because... They see me every day and I don't have to sit and call them every day because they get to see me very subtly. So they're my three super, super easy tips That's that great. I would be doing. Some great tips there. And that was unprompted. You didn't know that question was coming. So no. <laughs> well, well done on that. And of course, the best way, if you want to learn LinkedIn to get more property management business, it's really easy. Just go and watch what Ashley does. So go to um, LinkedIn and connect with Ashley Goodchild there. While you're at it, go and connect up with Melissa Hickson as well. Yep. Another superstar from our IGT inner circle. Of course, if you're not part of the inner circle, just um, go to the IGT inspired growth training Facebook page, go join group. There are three questions. We do uh, a, uh, ask or implore that you answer those so we know who you are um, or just go to the IGT inner circle on Facebook and you'll find Ashley, um, Melissa and a lot of other superstars in there as well. They don't answer the questions, they don't get in. It's as simple as that. There's a, <laughs> I heard there's a strict gatekeeper um, that oh, <laughs> um, is, is very harsh and ensures that the culture of the group is um, kept to the best standard they possibly can. Um, Ashley, you, so, so talking about LinkedIn, talking about social media, et cetera, there's a difference to being on social and being in social, right? And, and um, you know, a lot of people back in 2009, I remember I attended a, a conference that um, Darren was actually speaking at, et cetera, and there was one, and I'd been screaming at my boss saying, we need a Facebook page, we need an online presence, that's where people are, you know, back then. And... and um, yes, once we attended a conference and some experts said, let's do it, our, our company did it. And so I actually did use Facebook as a strategy back then in local groups. Now, so that's being in social, that's doing it. A lot of people, no doubt, go to a conference or, a, or an event and they do what there's been set. Oh, they said do it, let's do it, but they don't know what to do. You, however have turned that on its back and you've implemented and I believe you're mastering it. You know, like some of the things that you're talking about uh, and, uh, and I, I'd like you to share that a little bit later. We're going to, I'd like to get into a couple more questions, but you really are doing social well. And, you know, you're talking about the, the LinkedIn, that third tip uh, of connect, connecting with them. It's becoming top of mind. They trust you. They like you. So they want to use you. You're drawing those those people around you. So well done. And it certainly shows why your staff feel the same about it as well within the office. So, you know, that's brilliant. So and just touch, also, I was just going to touch on that. You're absolutely right. Like with trusting like the, the process or trusting people that say like, you know, with your Facebook, because that's how I got onto LinkedIn when someone, some, you know, trainer had said to me, you've got to be on LinkedIn. And I'm like, that's just an old man's club. Like seriously. <laughs> but I had to trust and say, you know what? He knows more than me with regards to LinkedIn. I'm going to trust that and I'm going to do it. And that's why I committed to it. But people have to commit to it for a good six or 12 months. I mean, now, like the other day, I had a call from someone who called me up and he was, he was very, um, quite assertive. He was just like, 
listen, my name's Barbara. I have seen you on LinkedIn. I like your energy and I want to book you in to see you on Wednesday, the 29th of September at this time. And I was like, beautiful. So it does, it does work when people can see you, um, yeah, see your energy and see what you're about. I, I think social media is one of those hard things to measure with performance. Um, people just don't ring up generally and say, hey, look, I just saw your Facebook story. I want to sign up now. But it, it comes out in connection. It comes out in conversation. It comes out uh, with people that see you in the street and they talk to you like they know you and you're thinking, I've never seen you in my life. Um, or people come up to you and they and just connection, you know, conversation starters. And it just, you know, how have you found that, Ashley? Have you actually been able to tangibly measure um, your your social media work as a return with management agreements that have been signed you know what sort of return uh, have you actually been able to see well you know i'm not a, a numbers girl in terms of documenting it but i can like so for me i also believe in databasing your database so my linkedin yes i get people directly call me up and say, I've seen you on LinkedIn, I'm friends with you on LinkedIn, and I'd like you to come out. So absolutely. Um, I Where I get my biggest benefit from LinkedIn, though, is the referrals, definitely. Um, so the referrals are from maybe from a friend on LinkedIn that sees me all the time, and they've got a friend mm. who wants to rent out their property. My referrals are very, very high. And I do um, believe that they are from LinkedIn because that's where all my clients are and that's where they see me. So I'm always first of mind for them. Um, but the other direct benefit is definitely that warm lead. Like I go into a new management appointment and I don't have to sell myself because they know already what I'm about. I go in there, I don't take fees, I don't discuss fees at that appointment because I've already, I'm the type of person that sends it to them beforehand. But I go in there and all I am there for is for them to see me in person to um, confirm what they've seen online. And I'm there to talk about a marketing plan for their property and how I think their property is best marketed. That's, that's it. That's brilliant. It, it, it certainly is brilliant. It, it's all that top of mind. You know, um, Darren, yesterday I received two messages from two of our clients. One I'd met in person last um, week and I said, get onto Instagram, get onto your online presence and make it happen. She sent me an email yesterday, a, 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 a an Instagram message saying, oh my goodness, I set up an Instagram account and just on that one post, I've created leads and and this is for a commercial agent, right? And I said, great, that's fantastic. And another superstar that we know, Melanie Poole, um, she put a big post in the group about Instagram saying how it's got her new business as well. You know, it works. These yeah. two people and yourself, you, you're the ones that are implementing and becoming online present and making it happen. It's not too late, people, to join social media. It's not too late. And with Instagram, so again, I've just started getting direct um, direct leads from that. And where, where that's come from is the businesses, the local businesses that I support, whether it's whether in my video, whether it's just engaging with them on social media. Um, they not only do they refer business, but now I've actually got the business owners who message me directly and say, hey, I've got a property I want you to look after. So that um, Instagram I find really taps into the business community side of things and that, um, that database. Now you need to share what you said to me last week um, when, when you right. actually went to a shop and one of your friends rang you up. What did they yeah. say? Tell, tell us the story, what happened there. Oh, so I think that was when I was at Base Aesthetics doing, um, doing my video. And I fell in love with this new business that I found in South Perth. And um, as a direct result from that, I had two people call me up and say, oh, Ash, I didn't even know that place was there. Is this where you go and get your eyebrows done? Is this where you, you, know, you go and get that done? And I was like, yeah, yeah. So that business actually got two new clients. Um, but it shared it with everyone. But it just shows that it does get noticed. And then not only have I got now friends being referred to their business, um, I am seen to that business as someone of good character, someone who supports them. And I know if someone walks in having their eyebrows waxed and someone goes, oh, I'm looking for a rental property at the moment, I'm really busy. I know that they will say, hey, give us your call at Soko. Uh, there's, some good news. there's some really good news coming out of this. Dennis, you've got a new place in South Perth to go get your eyebrows done now. <laughs> It's been a while. Monobrow. <laughs> it, it, you, you can't tell, but trust me, there's hair there. <laughs> <laughs> it's hair in the middle. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, 
So, Ashley, uh, I appreciate you'll be able to pick me up at the airport and drive me straight there next time I'm in Perth when, when I'm allowed to fly. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, well, Dennis, I'm going to tell you something really funny. This is a little bit off topic, but I want you after this podcast to go Google eyebrow lamination. So this is what the um, this is what this space aesthetic company does. They also do la um, eyebrow lamination. And I'm just thinking of because with your eyebrows are quite long and um, you'll see how they can like position them. So anyway, Google that later for a bit of fun. I will. Now, now in my defence, I am a foreigner, okay? I'm a foreigner to Australia. My dad and my mum are Turkish, okay? So I've got the genes. Yes, I'm a wog. I'm allowed to say it because I am one. Um, but my chest, there's no hair on my back and chest, okay? It's all here. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> oh, look, we can bring up lots of things in these podcasts. Now, Ash, I think you've already answered it, but what is your favourite rent roll growth strategy? What's your favourite prospecting that you're doing? Oh, it has to be LinkedIn. It really does. It's it's the only one that captures um, current clients plus new clients plus referrals. Like, it captures everything you know what I mean? You can do your letterbox drops and that's fine. And there is a reason why you need to do that. But that is only creating, you know, cold leads, people that don't know you. Um, you, you really just need to be tapping into that referral network and creating those warm leads. And, and I really do believe LinkedIn is the, the best platform for that. Yeah, very well said. And, and it's interesting, you know, um, as trainers, we're always out there saying you need to network with your strategic alliance. You know, people attend B&I's, Chamber of Commerce, whatever meetings they go to, that's only one meeting. That's only meeting them once. You've only got that one opportunity. LinkedIn is 24-7. Um, and, and I must say, I love your strategy in, in sending them the message because, you know, we all get over, you know, someone connects with you and then they're, they're selling to you. I get real estate um, people trying to sell um, virtual assistance to us or, or yeah. they're, you know, are you looking for leads for real estate? And I go, did you even read my bio? Like, like we have a virtual assistant company. I'm a real estate trainer, not a real estate office, you know? So um, it's just that they just, they're those people that are connecting with everyone, but there really is a lot of power in those strategic alliances in becoming top what, of what, what you said also before, um, Ashley, regarding you, you, you go my network and anyone that, you've connected with, you've got their email address, you've got their phone number, whatever, you're inserting them into there. Um, mm. And I've learned certainly through the marketing study that I've been doing lately, you, you, can't, you can't do business with cold people. Um, they, people these days, it's not about finding you in the phone book because the phone book doesn't exist anymore. Um, they, they're not just going to look you up and I'll, oh, they look like a real estate agent, I'll use them. It's all about trust. And so by taking um, LinkedIn and um making sure that anyone that you're networking with, so people out there, if you're listening, this means any prospective clients that you've dealt with, including your current clients, anyone that has the power to bring you business, you just spreadsheet them, um, you know, obviously their email address, their name, their phone numbers, all those sorts of things. And then with my network function in LinkedIn, insert them in there um, and then have your, you know, your regular posts, your regular stories. I know, Ashley, you got so excited when uh, the story function actually came out on LinkedIn. You said you were squealing like a little kid in a chocolate shop or yeah. something. Um, and I go and check out what Ashley's doing. Go and check out what Melissa's doing there. So you can see how to turn a cold audience into a warm audience into raving fans. Um, and then, you know, in between that warm and raving fan is where you're going to get that contact. Um, and just to see what, you know, the movers and shakers like Ashley are doing on LinkedIn. I think that's a great strategy. And in fact, Dennis, I'm going to look at LinkedIn with renewed vigor. About time. That's good. Now, can we also talk about reversing it? You can, you can extract the data from LinkedIn, all these people that you're connecting with. Facebook, Instagram, no other platform allows you to do that. So you can, so all of these people, and... and without putting, turning it into a training session, it's B to B, you know, so many times, you know, I would be calling a real estate office and, and I know that the, the principal's in there because they've just emailed me, give me a call, but the person will say, oh, I'll just see if they're in the office at the moment. You know, there's a gatekeeper, LinkedIn puts you straight to the business owner, okay, or to direct to the person that you want, um, which is so important. It, it's a... 
Huge. And the content, the content as well on LinkedIn is really important. I think one mistake that a lot of people make is that they don't want to share any of their, their personal life on there. And I absolutely am not saying, you know, putting these real personal posts, but just a touch. So every now and then you may see a picture of um, me with my kids in school holidays. That's, is it, that's more of a random one to do. But I want people to know how my, you know, uh, I want them to know me on a personal level because when they know me on a personal level, they want to do business. And one thing I see that people do wrong is they just have um, very sort of what I call boring um, 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 scripted type little posts. Um, mm. um, and they're, they're very predictable. And so if you have, you know, just your standard Canva post, seven tips for this, seven tips for that. But that gives me no idea of who you are, what you're about, and, you know, what your personality is. Who would I be dealing with if I was to, to speak to your office? So I just think um, that there needs to be a nice balance of um, the, the office, the environment we work in. Yes, the nice properties that have come up for sale, but very rarely will you see a property for rent um, being advertised on my LinkedIn. I put it up there every now and then with a nice property to showcase the marketing and what we can do for our clients from a marketing point of view. But you will very rarely see that um, on mine. That, that's for other social media, not for LinkedIn. LinkedIn yeah. for me is um, it's education and teaching people um, about the market. Why is a 1.6% vacancy rate good for you? Why is it not good for you? Um, you know, that, that type of thing, that is what you are there for because that is what your clients on there want because they're your, they're your investors and you're, they're your investors as well. Yeah, absolutely well said. Now, to move it on, we could talk for hours. I know, sorry. Um, you're giving some amazing insight here, which is great. What, what are your key points of differences? What, what makes, you know, um, you know, SoCo Realty stand out from the rest? The biggest one for me is the our hyper local um, reputation. So, eighty three percent of our our work that we do in our office from a sale and a rental point of view is in this South Perth area, and that is something that I don't think any other agent can claim um, they do because they focus on lots of areas. So, that's definitely something that I mention quite a lot. Um, the other points of differences are not necessarily. Um, uh, strong points of difference but I definitely do discuss them because I believe we're different from others when it comes to it um, and that is that our office does not outsource so we don't uh, we used to um, but we don't outsource anything um, we don't my property managers like to be a true portfolio based um property manager they like to do the leasing they like to market the property they like to meet the prospective tenants they like to do everything from start to finish so that's something that these days it's actually quite unusual in a real estate office to see because you know most offices have a leasing consultant um, have a VA and like I say to everyone that is all that's all fine because it's every office is structured differently um, but as long as the client knows and understands that that is how your office is because the client actually thinks that everyone operates the same so my I, so so subtly my point of difference is going into this new management not to get the business but to educate them to make the best decision and 80 percent of the time that is me so well done and Let's not forget your point of difference of having longevity of staff. That's yes, one. real big one. And, yeah. and I think it's the people, the property owners out there that have already had their fingers burnt with a property manager that would really get on that. Whereas new people coming into the market, the first time they've been um, property owners with a rental property, they don't understand the pain of um, you know, having a high turnover of staff. Yeah. Actually, let, let's, um, let's just switch um, now to, uh, you know, the big pain that property management agencies, BDMs, people out there that are out, out there to sign up new business and the, the rife discounting and, and dealing with the fee objections and things. So how do you deal with the, the, the fee situation? How, do, how does Ashley Goodchild from Soco Realty make sure that you get your full fees and you're not having to adjust your fees to that of another competitor? Very, very simply, I don't make it a big deal. It's not, a, it's not the focus of any discussion of fees. So for me, um, we have good, reasonable, well-valued fee structure. Um, the client gets that before the appointment and 
that is it. I actually don't discuss fees. I think that people can get into that situation of um, can you match, um, can you do cheaper when you go to that appointment and you sit there with your fee schedule and you're looking at it and you are, you are controlling that appointment to show that that is what we're here to discuss. No, we're not here to discuss the fees. I don't even bring the fee schedule. That's on my, that's on my other email I sent you. Um, so by not making it a focus, um, a focus point of my meeting, um, very, very rarely does it come up. If the odd time it does come up, I would rather value add to the client as opposed to change my fees. So I would um, possibly say, listen, how about I offer you some free photography? You know, most agents probably include that anyway. I don't normally, but I will value add by saying, listen, I can do that for you. Um, or I will also um, outline the benefits of, listen, my database is so strong for the South Perth area. I actually reckon that I can lease your property without even advertising. Let me put it on my database. And if I can lease it off my database, um, which I'm very confident I can, I won't charge you an internet upload. So I give them those benefits um, as opposed to having to change anything. But it's really a discussion point because I don't allow it to be a discussion point. And I think if you've worked on the trust, you've got all of that through your social media, um, you know, any agent out there, um, your aim is to have the owner, you um, having you as their favorite and therefore the fees don't really come into discussion. Um, it's really Absolutely. Is to have no discussion on fees or at worst, very, very little. So well done, Ashley. Yeah, Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap this up, Dennis. We got one more question now. Ashley, you're on stage. Let's say you're. No, sorry, I apologise. Oh, I've got okay. one more question before. All right, far away. You far away, and then it's going to be my turn. Ash has got. She's got a lot going, and um, you know, I'd like to know what's next. You know, you, you're doing some really cool things on socials and stuff, and I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to be going and watching what you're doing. But what, what's next? What's 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 your goal? You know, what are you trying to achieve? So, so business-wise, um, I want to make sure that I'm maximising the labour that I have. So I can maximise the labour I have by taking on another 50 properties. So for me, that is a business goal that I've got. So um, once we hit 600, that means um, my staff are all topped up and, um, and I, can, I can leave them for a bit. Um, because my business looks after itself, it allows me to personally continue with improving my brand, which then subsequently improves the business and the growth of the business as well. But for me, um, I am really, really enjoying the support for property managers. I mean, I know that I give a lot, but I also do receive a lot. And I do um, watch a lot, a lot of property managers around Australia, and I do get a lot of inspiration from them as well. So for me, um, I, if I can you know, mention it, I've got my the PM Collective podcast, which I love to do and um, I really love showcasing different property managers and their opinions on um, on the industry and discuss issues that sometimes um, aren't respected in a um, social media forum so I like doing that so I'd probably really like to continue growing that side of things from a personal brand but I guess you've got to remember that all of that personal branding is still BDM marketing and bringing business to the the company it's um but it's a different way of approaching new business growth so that um yeah, i just want to i just want to continue doing what i'm doing um basically that, that's just my aim i just want to keep on doing it consistently i don't want to be one of those per, um, people that start doing something and then just last three months doing it like i want to create that um that routine so yeah so you're really finding your feet so you want to master what you're doing you know, which is great. I think that's really important because you really are building um, a dominant online influencing um, marketplace for yourself. So uh, what, what's the name of the podcast? So I, I've just looked it up. You just go to iTunes and it's PM Collective. Um, and it, well, you're on any other podcast platforms as well than just iTunes? Spotify. Spotify. So Spotify and iTunes, PM Collective, um, lovely picture there of Ashley holding a cup of coffee. Dennis, you'll be happy. Um, great photography too. You're, you're, you've obviously, um, you know, there's all sorts that we could talk about that you've been up to. Ashley, I think this is not going to be the last uh, you know, recording we're going to be doing with you. I can see that we'll be doing some more. I, I just want to finish this off because we've got to wrap it up today. It's been a, a very long podcast. I know we've got a lot out of it. Um, and 
Question for you, Ashley. You're on stage. Let's say you're on stage at the IGT conference and in the room is people that want to grow. So you've got BDMs, you've got business owners, you've got property managers, people that are really interested in marketing of their business and growing their business. So that's the type of crowd you've got. You've got one minute. What would, what would be the number one most important thing you'd want to say to them? It would absolutely be to trust trust the trainers and trust the people that um, are experts in their field and allow allow um, allow yourself to to immerse into whatever they're teaching um, whether it's you know fee changes um, social media growth but commit to it commit to it for six or twelve months before you have an opinion because I used to have an opinion without committing and so that's my number one tip yeah if they tell you to do something do it and can yeah do it consistently committing to six to 12 months before you make a decision whether you think it works or doesn't work now actually you're the type of lady honestly i'm sure that you've already had people property managers call you up cry on your shoulder all that sort of thing you just type that type of person that supports people what is the best way that people can get in contact with you um if they wanted to say hello reach out or connect or whatever what's the best way Oh, any social media is absolutely fine. LinkedIn, Instagram are probably the two easiest ways to get a hold of me. Um, and then on my mobile, which is um, 0416 And actually, there's one more thing. Um, another great way to see sort of what I'm doing and producing is um, my website, which is just ashleygoodchild.com.au. And I use that as a bit of a library to hold my blogs, my podcasts, my YouTube videos as well. So if someone wants you to see sort of everything in one, um, library, um, jump on there and have a quick look and you can sort of see the content there as well. There you go. Goodness. And you run a property management business too. So you're and, a very, and you've got, how many kids have you got? You've got three, three too many. Children, and <laughs> my goodness me, you are truly superwoman. So thank you so much, Ashley. It's been a great podcast. Um, it's a real pleasure. We really feel privileged. We feel famous to be associated with you. Um, and uh, thank you so much for your time today. You're very kind and thank you for having me. It's been, um, it's been great. Cool. Thanks, Ashley. Awesome work. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you.